I'm pleased to say I'm joined by the 1983 champion of the world, Keith Della. Thanks for the time, Keith. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks, Alex. Yourself? Doing good, thanks. And we're talking at the start of another big week in the World Seniors with the World Seniors match play taking place this weekend in Hull. You'll be in action on the opening night on Friday. How much are you looking forward to playing on the stage and in front of the cameras once again? Really looking forward to it. Um, I think Jason um, Tame and Jason Francis, the promoters, you know, they've got it right. Um, you know, some players play a preliminary because they might not have done so well in the events when they were in the past. Like, obviously, the World Championship, I'd won it, so I was obviously not playing the preliminaries, and um, I lost in the final of the Masters to Eric, but my best record was the semi final twice once as a PDC, the match play, and once in the BDO. So, Obviously, I'm in a preliminary round, which is a little bit more, one more hurdle to do, but, and uh, playing a very good player, Colin McGarry, who I think any any of the players you play that come through the playoff qualifiers, you know, you saw what happened with David Cameron, he won it, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm not worried really. I think if it's all about what I do personally, if I come out and play really well, I just feel that I'm getting more comfortable now. Um, playing again, Alex. I mean, I think if you ask some of our some of the players, it's 14 years since we played on TV, and the first one. Um, I mean, I've really practiced. I practiced too hard, maybe. You know, I put too much into it. You know, it was sort of, you know, everything was like, oh, any chance of spare moment on the practice board in the garage on the practice board, and in a way, I, I got it wrong there. That was just too much, and. Um, so, and then the last one I played, um, obviously Bob didn't play his, his best, but it's still nice to win the first game. And the second one against Richie Helson, um, really I had chances. Um, you know, I didn't take the chances early doors. I, I felt I could have won that match. So, but I felt more comfortable. So, I feel that I'm going into this one better than I will be the other two. So, it, I'm really looking forward to it. Good to hear. Well, there is lots to catch up on since we last had you on the show, October last year, just before the launch of your book, 138 Game Shot in the Match. When we spoke, you said how excited you were for darts fans to read it. What's the reaction been like to the book since it came out? I've got to be honest, it's been really positive. I don't think I've had one negative, uh, either on Twitter or anyone. Um, They've all said that it was a great read because I think because... You know, without being big ahead of my final, it's still the biggest viewing figures ever. I don't think that will ever get beat when I played Eric. And, the, the, you know, I was the underdog and the British do love an, um, you know, an underdog where I was like 80 to 1 in the bookies and come through to be the top three players in the world and they were the best three at the time. So I think people always kept asking me the, the question I've heard a million times, should Eric have gone for the bullseye, the one three eight? What was it like, you know, from coming from nowhere to win the world title? So it was really... Um, in a way, it, it was lockdown, um, that Alex, that really made me do it. I mean, I think if, if lockdown had happened, I must probably still wouldn't have done it. But um, a gentleman called Ed, um, Edward Cousin Lake, um, who was a friend of um, Russell, Lord Russell Baker that I know, and uh, he said, well, I'd like to do it. And that's how we did it. And it gave me a chance in lockdown. He would send me, well, he used to put homework, send me <laughs> questions. And it was very hard to keep going back. But I can honestly say everything in that book is true. There's nothing like, I know some people can make things up to make a book look better. Actually, what happened in that book is, is 100%. So, um, yeah, it's been very positive and really enjoyed it. And I remember you said before how you'd been asked for a lot of years by fans to put your story out there in a book. So what was that feeling like when it did finally get published? And you say you were getting a lot of messages from people saying they'd bought it and they'd read it and they'd enjoyed it as well. Yeah, I think, you know, I was really proud in a way. I mean, um, I was really um, pleased and, and I really appreciate Stephen Fry, who did the forward for my book. Um, Stephen came along to the final when Phil had the two nine darters and... Uh, and I always remember saying, um, hello, Mr. Fry. He went, Mr. Della, I know you. Don't... And he used to say all about the darts he used to watch. And um, he loved our era of darts like he does now. I mean, but he, he remembers all us. Because obviously there was only four channels on TV then. So it was, in a way, I wouldn't say it's more profile, but more people watched it in our day because it was only four channels. When you think 10 million people watched my final against Eric and where you think that nowadays it's on Sky or it could be ITV4, I don't think they would get near those sort of figures and um, and I just got the letter to say, would you mind saying a few words? And he said, I'd love to. So I really was really honoured actually because he's such a fantastic person 
Yeah, and obviously Phil Taylor. Um, Phil, um, uh, I said to Phil, would you say a few? And he said, yeah, I love to, mate. I've already been good friends with Phil. You know, we, I, spoke, I spoke to him a day, actually. I was telling him, is he getting nine darts this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, uh, and I said, I've got a couple of hard games and I've got an easy one when I get to the semis. <laughs> Never mind, Phil. But no, it's, um, it was great. Uh, it's an easy, the greatest time. I don't think you can even do anyone near it. Sorry, Michael. You know, I think Michael's the second best player of all time, but I don't think you, you could argue with Phil, and it was a great honour as well to have Phil to say some lovely words about me in the book. So it was really nice, um, and also, you know, as I say, people have come up to me and said, you know, I really enjoyed your book, and so, you know, I'm really pleased, and I just hope anybody who buys the book enjoys it. And you touched on it as well. We've had these World Seniors events this year, the World Championship the World Masters as well. Just touching on the, the World Championship, it was a, a close game with Larry Butler. And as you say, it's a first time playing on TV for a long time. How did you reflect on that first game back after all those years? Well, I thought I'd beat Larry Butler. I didn't lie. I mean, but the thing is, Larry's been playing in competitions in America. People don't really don't realise, you know, that competitive darts. I mean, I was putting in four hours a day, three hours a day, and, you know, 180, 140, 100, 180. But, you're throwing all the time you've got no pressure and players I mean there was a perfect example Robert Ford you know I, I, I said that Robert maybe wasn't good enough didn't play good enough to hold his tour card I mean he's a brilliant player but the bottom line is he didn't have his tour card he lost it Robert really was just not playing good enough to be on the tour card but he was too good for us in the first one and obviously he must have thought well I should beat these guys really um, I mean maybe Martin Adams Phil was still rusty I still think he's still rusty and uh, you know and I just felt that Robert was such a hot favourite and then when we got to the next one um, David Cameron played Kevin Painter and Kevin was unlucky um, he could have won that it was a really good maybe the best game um, in the tournament really I thought the first round that game was and uh David Cameron then sort of kicked on really well. Again, a player that's playing competitions. You know, he's, it's it is an advantage. I, you know, I'm not going to. I mean, I joined Super League, Alex. I've joined. You know, I played in local tournaments. I mean, I played in one local tournament, and I, you know, I played brilliant. I know I lost in the last sixteen, but we both were on a hundred average. You know, it's just it's that sort of pressure that you need to play and unfortunately we just and, and I'll tell you what's hers as well exhibitions I know people say yeah but you don't always play a lot of good players but you go three hours away to a town and people are paid money to come and watch you you've got to play well so there is pressure but you're on, on the board all night so it is a big advantage so yeah, I, I found it Super League I went first Super League game I was a bit nervous I thought God I haven't played Super League for 20 years <laughs> yeah. so it was really like going back in time for me but I needed to play under pressure I still felt that at the Masters um, just too many loose shots are doing me at the moment and that's what I've been trying to work on why, why am I doing it and it really is well I've just tried a bit too hard so uh, I, the reason, and you know, I thought, well, how can I still try and get better? So I spoke to um, Jason Tame and Georgie Noble, and I said, can I ever go at the online darts? And I'll be honest with you, Alex, I know, I knew I was going to get my backside kicked. I mean, Jesus, I mean, these guys, they they want to get back on the main tour, so they shouldn't be losing to sixty-two-year-olds, should they? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, I mean, difference between me and Martin Adams. Martin's been playing on a lot of these all year, so he's a lot sharper. But if you ask Martin, he didn't play well in the last seniors event. So there's no guarantees. But I went along to the online darts and uh, I thought, well, this would be interesting. And my first game uh, was Robert Owen. And he decided, decided to put 103 average in, which, uh, and I lost 4 2. But I took a couple of good finishes out. And I thought, well, that ain't bad. And then I played a, a guy from Northern Ireland. And he did play well against me. I think he had 101 average. And I thought, wow, OK, move on. <laughs> and then I think I had another game. I'd lost 4-2. And then I lost another one, um, 4-2. Uh, so Lee, Lee Evans. And uh, I thought, well, you know, apart from that, I didn't get hammered. But they were so much sharper than me. That was the difference. And the next night, my first game, I felt more comfortable the second night. I thought, I know what to expect now. And I played Lee Evans. I was 2-0 down. And I think I went... 171.94 out, uh, 88 on the ball. And the last leg, I went 140, 180 out and two darts, 14 darts. And I think that would do me good for Friday. I felt that I'm playing players I know that are better than me. 
look, I know I'm the underdog on Friday, but I don't think I'm much a much underdog. I know that yeah, I can beat uh, Colin, Colin McGarry. I can beat him on Friday, and, and uh, he'll be very confident and beat me. So it's good, and I think as fingers crossed, you know, I, I can. Pl- I know I'm playing in the one in next February, the Worlds Seniors, and hopefully I'll be out playing a few more the next few years, and I'll get better because I know that my practice is. I'll just keep practicing hard. I'm getting a lot of exhibitions coming now, which is great. So it's you know I'm going to get sharper, and I'll, I'll do the online again. I thought it was great. I think it's a fantastic um, thing what they're doing, and it really does sharpen you up because it really is tough. You go in a room there, and it's just you, the referee, and the, your opponent. It's it's tough, but it's a really good learning curve and, and for playing under pressure. Just quickly touching on that World Seniors Masters, we did see you get that win against Bob Anderson and we'll probably remember that event. One of the reasons we'll remember it is your celebrations early on against Richie House and some liking them to go in price. I remember you said before about how when you won the first set against Phil at a World Championship, you really milked it. Was it the same thing with this as well? Yeah, I just thought, I just wanted to make a little reminder that he's not going to get it all his own way. And then he said to me afterwards, he went, Jesus, you, you come out, you come at me. And, uh, and I thought, well, why shouldn't I? You know, I've been world champion, and at the end of the day, I always say that at the players, I mean, John Lowe hasn't played his best, but John Lowe has been one of our greatest players of all time. John Lowe could well Kate will go up there. Obviously, Kevin Payne is going to be a really hot favourite, but John might just come out and be the John Lowe of old. You just don't know. It's You always got to give respect to the players that have done it because they won't be scared to do it again. Some of the other players, you've got to say, well, you know, are they used to TV? Are they going to be as confident as we think? You don't know that. And uh, I just feel that there's no pressure on me. At the end of the day, I've, I've done my bit in the history of the darts. Uh, Colin, nice guy. I've met Colin a few times. Very good dart player. But, you know, I'm not I'm not worried. I'm just going to give it a go and hopefully entertain the fans. And I shall, if I take something out good, I'm going to give it. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> and also the, the red trousers are coming out again. <laughs> Great to see you. It's been great to see the red trousers. Great to see yourself and a lot of the other players back on our screens, the, the walk-ons as well. We have to mention your walk-on. Things can only get better. What was your reaction when you found out that Damon Hetter was using the song as well? Well, I said to him, I went, you should be coming on to The Heat Is On. Because he's yeah. nicknamed The Heat, is it? You should be coming on to something like that. He, he should be taken by one. But anyway, but people, uh, he's done fantastic. Him and Simon win the World, World Cup pairs. I was really chuffed for him. I just thought it was fantastic. Um, in memory of Kyle Anderson as well but um, you know it was a great and it was nice that they dedicated that to Kyle he was such a lovely man and, uh, and a brilliant dart player but it's uh, yeah it was quite strange when I heard him I said to him Oi, what are you doing <laughs> and he was like um, Alan Warren with um, cold his eyes but it was something with Gerwin Price but I don't mind to be honest it's uh, it's all good fun if he wants to use it if anybody else wants to I, I, I don't really mind but that, I'll always still come out to it and I, I have to I mean if I was to change it they'll say no no you can't do that <laughs> it's just a great I mean I've got to be honest uh, we've been very lucky because I said that, uh, I think I said before that, that the reasons why we've got the world seniors it's given us our you know last horizon and last chance of being in the limelight and it's fantastic and I feel that um, Jason Tame, Jason Francis, who Jason Francis, obviously Ronnie O'Sullivan's manager, Jason Tame, Michael Bangoans, you know, they've done, they've worked really hard. Jennings, the sponsors, they've been fantastic. They've backed all of the events. And we've had other sponsors helping out as well. And uh, obviously getting on BT Sport, which is fantastic as well. It's, it's a lot of hard work. And the Circus Tavern was fantastic. They really did push the event very well for us. And also the bonus arena have. I think we could have been a bit more supported at Lakeside, but unfortunately, you know, it wasn't to be. But at the end of the day, it's an, it's you know it's an iconic venue. But I think we could have really pushed harder and it got a bigger crowd. So that was a little bit disappointing for me. But I'm really looking forward to the bonus arena. I know they've really been pushing it, and this is going to be a, a fantastic event. Obviously, Phil's the favourite, and if the real Phil Saver turns up, then and then we're all in trouble. <laughs> so, but I just think it's, I think what's nice, when you go there, I mean, at the, fir- at the last event, I gave away a set sign of Loxley, Keith Della darts and a shirt, 138 shirt, and we've done it as a fancy dress, and it was, they really liked it. So this Friday, uh, there'll be another um, 
eight shirt, the one three eight shirt that I play in. Um, I'm going to sign that, and we'll do another fancy dress just to sort of say thank you to the people that are supporting the event. And obviously, you know, this, the tickets are still available. It's, it's, you know, I know they're going well, but the more the merrier. Definitely, yeah, that's a, a nice touch. And this year as well, we've, we've had the World Seniors come in, which has been great to see. A lot of new events this year. Another one which we've got next month, the Women's World Match Play at the Winter Garden. So you said to us last time you thought Lisa Ashton was the best ladies player right now. She's proven it on the Women's Series, top of that list, Fallon at number two. What have you made of the Women's Series and how do you see this first Women's World Match Play playing out? I just hope they, I mean, we expect Lisa to play really well. We expect Fallon to play really well. I love this in Bo Greaves in there. To me, I think she's an unbelievable dark player. And I think if Bo would have been in there as well, I think she would have rattled Fallon and Lisa big time, personally. So, and it might be been good. But, you know, no, she didn't play in the qualifiers. So, obviously, she can't play at Blackpool. So, that's right. But, obviously, the, them two are way above the other girls. But, it's a chance for the other six to try and uh, win the tournament. I think that it's it's a real big thing for the lady darts because, you know, if the standard doesn't do well, then people will start saying, well, is it worth it sort of thing. But I think uh, I think they'll play really well. I think there's some good players. Laura Turner, Laura who works for Sky with us. I like to see Laura win it, obviously, because <laughs> she uh, works for Sky like I do. So, uh, I, but there's some you know, good players. I need to graph Lorraine Wynn Stanley, and I mean, they're all good players. So, and they can all play, and they can all beat Lisa and Fallon. But you just feel that you know. I think people will want to see Lisa against Fallon in the final, and then really fight it out, and then we'll know who the best is. Definitely, and away from the darts, we spoke about it before. You being a big Ipswich Town fan, and what a draw in the League Cup playing my team, Owen Binks's team, Colin Lloyd's team, the pride of Anglia, Colchester United. Once Colchester <laughs> knock Ipswich out of the cup, you can focus on the league. How do you see the season going for Ipswich? I think we'll have a big season. I think we've still got maybe another two or three players to come in, and maybe a, um, I think last year, no disrespect, Paul Cook. <laughs> I met I met Paul. He's, he, he's before he's a nice guy, but I didn't like him running out before the players. I didn't get all that. It's like he's the first player on the pitch, but didn't get that personally. Um, and I feel that he just uh, just didn't work. I think that um, the format he never changed. Um, Kieran, the new manager, is just quietly good, brilliant what he's done. He's he's obviously got a lot of experience under Mourinho and the people like. You know, like that. So it's going to help. The standard of football now is so much better. It's quick. I mean, the, we've got a really good side. We, to be honest with you, last year, I would say 90% of the teams we outplayed. I think the only team that really outplayed us twice was Bolton. They beat us twice. And apart from that, we, we just didn't put the ball in the net. And that was the problem. And uh, we, got, we brought a few players in. I feel that with 16,000 tickets sold already... Um, so we know that every home game next year is going to be twenty two, twenty three thousand. So it's a big and getting Colchester. I don't think like before. Maybe there's a few players not playing. I think this one because I got to be honest. When you play this in that well, a waste of time competition, what was it Johnson <laughs> Paint or whatever it was? Yeah, I, I went to that and God, they were Colchester fans were loud. But the thing is, it was like. Do they? I don't think they were really. I don't think they're bothered about that competition. I mean, I, if you ask the town fans, could we not play in that? They'd say yes, please. But the Carabao Cup is the League Cup, and I think uh, there'll be at least twenty thousand there that night. And uh, we're gonna have to put you boys to bed. I did say to um, Binks, I said, "Look, Banks, I said, look, mate, remember." We're playing a little club down the road, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and we have had a little, we've had a little bet. We have. I've said that Colchester don't make the, the playoffs, the top seven, and he said Ipswich won't make the top six. So we've had, we've had two little fun bets, and uh, you know. So, but I like, I like, I love to see Colchester win League Two because it's a local club, isn't it? I can't say the same about Norwich, unfortunately. No, I never want to see Norwich do well. But that's just the way it is. But Colchester, I like to see you do well. Cambridge are just down the road. I mean, you know, they but they beat us like this year, so last season, so they're on the hit list. But I think I think we'll I think we'll go up this year. And uh, you know, we're very lucky that we've got fantastic owners. Um got Ed Sheeran on the shirt sponsors. The profile for our club now is fantastic. It's 
it's very promising, but you can't win it by talking. You've got to do it on the pitch. It's the same with darts. You can talk it on the practice board, but you've got to do it on that stage under the lights and the cameras. So I always sort of just hopefully, fingers crossed, that we'll get out of this um, pub league, I call it, the league one. <laughs> you know, some of the pitches. I mean, I don't agree personally with the cap, salary cap. I mean, how can a team that only has 3,000 at home spend, spend the same amount of money as we can? I don't agree with that. So that's like saying, well, Man City, the Premier League, Watford couldn't spend 200 million like Man City, could they? So why why didn't they make that fairer? But it just seems that it's all about League One. You're going to get the, the bad salary cap. So, you know, it's up to the clubs to manage their affairs properly and, and do it right, really, isn't it? So, but hopefully we'll go up and uh, we'll take Colchester, sorry, and we'll... We'll get another home tie in round two. <laughs> <laughs> well, may the best team win when that game comes around. Keith, always a pleasure to chat to you. We appreciate the time and best of luck with the World Seniors this weekend and what else is to come in 2022. I'm really looking forward to it and wish everybody good darting, keep well and keep healthy. Thanks, Alex. Take care, mate.